Good morning. So I'm going to speak to you today about the world's 27 million darkest secrets. It's happening everywhere. It should be illegal everywhere. And unfortunately, it's happening somewhere in a neighborhood by you. It's the ugly dark secret of human trafficking. In layman's terms, to give you the easier version of what it is we're going to talk about this morning, human trafficking is the illegal movement or harboring of a person, whether it's across international borders, which we tend, if you've heard the term before, that's what we have a tendency here in Canada to think, that it's an international coming across from whether it's Japan, uh, Southeast Asia, into places like Canada and the United States. But human trafficking can be an illegal movement or harboring of a person right here in Canada. It can be province to province, city to city. It can be uh, harboring somebody in their own very home, right where we are here in Milton and in the surrounding areas. What is being done is the act of luring, coercing somebody, forcing them to do something that they wouldn't have naturally chosen to do on their on, by themselves, on their own. Many different tactics to keep them doing it there. And the purpose is for the exploiter's personal gain or profit. At the core of human trafficking is slavery, a more familiar term that we are, we're familiar with and have an understanding of. And although slavery is illegal everywhere in the world, it is still unfortunately happening here today in Canada and also abroad. We think it's abolished, but it's very much alive and well. Sometimes slavery is actually looking at us right in the face and we might not even recognize it. It's happening in our schools, both public and private schools. It's happening in our malls. It's happening at our movie theaters, sometimes even at coffee shops that you might actually frequent and go to. It's happening with our nannies that come here. It's happening in nail salons. It's happening in massage parlors. And actually in the photo you can see this massage parlor in particular is open till 2 a.m. Ask any woman you know the last time she went and had a massage after 7 p.m. at night. Kind of raises a red flag. And oftentimes these massage parlors are on second stories as well. I have never in my life wanted to go to a massage parlor or to a spa that you have to go upstairs to. But we see them all over, especially in, in Toronto, there's over 3,000 of them right now. It's happening on the pages of Craigslist, Kijiji, Backpage.com. This is just a recent ad that I just pulled up for the purpose of our conversation here today. It's happening in our agricultural fields, not too far from where we are, out in Niagara, but all the way across Canada as well. It's in the rice that we eat, it's in the sugar we crave, it's in the coffee we need, it's in the diamonds and the clothes that we wear, it's in the strawberries that are picked, and it's also in the peaches and in the apples that we consume. There are more people today in slavery than ever before in history. 27 million people are in some form of slavery right now globally. If you go online and do some research, you'll actually see that there's a broad range for this statistic, ranging from anywhere from 20 million to about 48 million. And I know that is, it's a broad range uh, for the purpose of free them and our allies and within the UN and certain different networks that we work with, we choose to use the term 27 million and that there's over that. So right now there's over 27 million people in some form of slavery. In Canada, the two most prevalent forms are forced labor and sexual exploitation. But there are other forms around the world, things like forced marriage, which is actually a growing, um, a growing form of trafficking that we are seeing in Canada, unfortunately, where young children are being forced to marry um, adults, whether they're 18 and plus, 30-year-olds, 50-year-olds, and because they're married, it allows for them to be able to do whatever they please to this young person, to the child. Chattel labor, debt bondage is another form of slavery. Whether you've been born into some form of debt and you have to pay off your debt before you can go, and literally you are a slave to that master. Or if your father went and took out a loan in places like India, 
where they take out a loan to start their own farm. What they don't realize is that when they take that loan, the interest rate is so enormously high that in their own lifetime, they will never be able to repay that debt. Small things like education that each of us have in this room, fortunately, know that when you go to the bank to take out a loan, the interest rate, if it's above 15%, you probably shouldn't do it. And even that is still very high. Well, for people who don't come from educated backgrounds, they go and take out a loan without realizing the debt that is going to incur. And all of a sudden, they find themselves in a life of slavery until that debt is paid off. Another form of trafficking is organ trafficking as well. So around the world, 27 million people, that's a really big number. And if you're like me, you don't have 27 million sitting in the bank. And if you do, please come talk to me after, because I'd love to be your friend. And if you don't have 27 million friends, Again, this number is intangible, no concept of it. And as I shared with you before the broad range of this statistic, for a moment I want to try to contextualize what 27 million is for us. Right now in our, in our country, in Canada, there's 36.6 million people. So imagine for a moment that our entire nation is in some form of slavery. Everybody from the East Coast, everybody to the West Coast, including all of our territories. And 80% are women and children. 70% are trafficked for the purpose of sexual exploitation, which is a really fancy way of saying to be raped 15 to 20 times a day. And you can see in the photo, the gentleman, I don't know, for some of the people maybe in the back, you can't read it, but he said that he paid for sex with a child that he found that was 14 years old on, the ba on Backpage.com. The average age of entry in our, in our country, in Canada, and even in the United States is about 13, 14 years old. Which means that's the average. So you guys are all very smart people. How you come up with that average to have that number be that low means what? You have to have a lot that are ages 9, 10, 11, and 12 years old to have that number be that low. The average age of rescue in Canada is just 17 years old. So again, when we think of the industry of the sex trade or prostitution, we have a misconception that we think prostitute equals choice. And right here this morning, what you're hearing and what you're learning is that these are kids, these are children. For me, I will argue to my death that that is never a choice. No child wakes up and chooses to be in a life of exploitation, sexual abuse. And so part of this morning of what I want to share with you is how you apply choice to a situation. For a lot of these girls that are entering in, and also boys as well, but it's predominantly still females, that it's a lack thereof. It's not a choice, but a lack thereof that brought them into this situation. Whether they're being sexually abused at home from a very young age, age three, four, five, six, and all the way up, whether it's by a friend, a family, a family member, a father, an uncle, a brother, or they just might be really hungry at home and there is no food or parents are working two jobs and they're being neglected. And therefore they leave what's supposed to be a safety haven and they go out to the streets to try to find something else or to have the abuse stop. For me, that's not, cho that's not a choice, that's lack thereof. And how we apply that situation. It's a $32 billion industry, which is greater than the profits of Nike and Starbucks combined. Years ago when I gave this talk, I used to be able to throw in Google there. But now Google is pretty comparative um, on their profits every year now. And I share that with you because, again, if you don't have $27 million, you don't have $32 billion, it's hard to understand what that number means and the weight of that number. This is a massive, massive illegal enterprise. It's the fastest growing crime on our planet today. And we're talking about billions of dollars. We all know the power of Google. We know the power of things like Amazon and how they influence and how they control us. And this is a huge industry that we're talking about this morning. One girl in Canada can make a pimp, a trafficker, an exploiter anywhere from $250,000 to $300,000 a year cash. So, and that's one. Imagine if you have five. Imagine if you have 10. It's what makes this such a lucrative business. And like I said, it's the fastest growing crime on our planet today. It is the largest illegal enterprise next to arms and drugs. 
The main difference is if I'm a drug dealer or I'm selling arms, I have a limited amount of product. So when I sell that product, it's gone. If I want to sell that product again, I have to get more product to sell you the product. Well, if you're a human trafficker, if I have people, I can just rent out my product and I don't have to go and get more product. So human trafficking is very lucrative from that standpoint because the body can be reused over and over and over again. So it begs the question here in Canada, who is this happening to, who is doing it, and also why? Outside of the obvious of what I just shared with you of how lucrative the industry is. Poverty and vulnerability are the two driving forces behind human trafficking. Sometimes it's just poverty, other times it's just vulnerability, and sometimes they both meet in the middle, and you'll see scenarios where that happens. Places overseas, like in Kenya or uh, in India, poverty and vulnerability go hand in hand. In Canada, we have the same thing, but sometimes they're independent. You'll see, for us, our most marginalized communities, which are our, our Aboriginals and First Nations people, Time and time again, and some of you in the room, I hope, have heard about the missing 500 women, and that's such a small number, it's way bigger than that. Because of the lack of education, so much abuse that goes on in the Aboriginal communities up in the north and in the different reserves around in the provinces, that at the any opportunity that they get to escape the abuse, to have go down to the city where they think they're gonna get a good job or an education, they meet somebody that says, you know, I can give you work. Or if you come down here and do this for me, I'll provide you with that. Our runaway youth, again, like I shared with you before, kids who are leaving their homes and going to the streets, street kids, kids in the foster system, orphans as well, are very prone to this. But it's also happening, like I shared with you earlier, in our schools, in public and in private schools. So this isn't a scenario where it's just coming from a broken family or a bad and abusive family. Kids that are from good, loving families that are taught right from wrong, that have good education and know better, this is happening to you. Every time I speak in high school, I get one student coming up to me after saying, I think this is happening to my friend right now. And so many kids are going home and laying their heads on their beds with their parents there, and they are being sexually exploited day in and day out. The difference with there is the more of a tactic of a wooing um, a tactic that these pimps and traffickers use, where it's a male usually between the ages of 18 to 25, sometimes a bit older than that, that will prey upon the 13, 14, 15, 16-year-olds and come off as if they are uh, going to be a boyfriend figure. They woo them for a bit, they dine them, not wine them because, you know, they're still a bit younger, but they bring them to the parties or they'll do the shopping and take them for dinners and tell them how beautiful they are. They sell them on the dream and they get them to a point where they're so conditioned that they will end up doing whatever their boyfriend asks them to do. And it's usually not at the beginning, of course, that the abuse starts. When you first meet your boyfriend, you kind of like him. You're supposed to like him. You're not going to be afraid of him. So the tactics of keeping them there and it's a much longer story, which unfortunately I don't have time to share with you today of how they do that. But they will switch, the switch comes on and they enter into an entire life of abuse and exploitation that they never thought was going to happen. So who is doing this? Your typical, like if I were to ask you guys, some of you I'm sure would say organized crime, yes. Our street gangs and then bigger gangs as well. But it's also happening by ordinary people that we just would not imagine. I'm not sure um, how many of you are from the Halton area, but just even last year, I think it was about a year, year and a half ago, uh, two realtors were arrested for trafficking in Halton, or certain, well, that is true, in Oakville and in Milton. And you would never have thought, and I'm actually a realtor by profession, and so for me hearing that in the industry, um, it was heartbreaking, but you go, like, what? Like, a realtor is doing this? Like, so it's people that you don't expect. Just even last week in Peterborough, the police arrested an, a 22-year-old and an 18-year-old couple, boyfriend and girlfriend, who were trafficking a teenager. They created an ad that they posted online, probably Backpage.com, that was a sex ad, and they pimped her out. They were exploiting her out for money. So it's happening by people that we don't expect. And then why? It's basic economics. Wherever you have a demand, there's going to be a supply for something. And unfortunately, in our world and also in Canada, there is a great demand 
to have access to female bodies and also growing attention to male bodies to purchase sex. And again, this is a, an enterprise, it's an illegal enterprise that is happening by every race to every race. Nobody is removed from it. And so you also have the same thing in professions. This is happening by taxi cab drivers, by your businessmen, by Bay Street traders, by lawyers, by doctors, by politicians, by tradesmen, by students, by couples. And it's, it's heartbreaking because you just wouldn't think, especially in today's day and age, we know better, we should know better. We're in that technology era where you have no reason to not know what is actually going on. Right now in Canada, um, and actually, sorry, before I share that with you, uh, to give you a prime example, on Monday, I got a Facebook message at 6 a.m. or 5.30 a.m. about a girl who was on a streetcar in Toronto and literally did a citizen arrest. With her cell phone, she videotaped this 50-plus-year-old um, man, he was a white male, who she caught speaking to a 15-year-old on the phone, and he was trying to lure her and convince her to come and meet him using phrases like, I'm a professional, I've done this before, I promise nothing bad will happen to you. And because she knew a little bit, and I'm hoping you guys are going to leave here today knowing a little bit, that she took the little knowledge that she had on human trafficking, and she said, this man is trying to meet up with this girl to purchase her for sex. And I saw the video, and I'm telling you, he's probably like 55, middle-aged male. And she held him on the streetcar. She put up her hand. She was like, you're not going anywhere. You sit down. We're calling the police. And I just thought, like, one, I need her to come up here with me. So I'm trying to recruit her. We're friends on Facebook now. But unbelievable. And this was just my Monday. Like, I, if I had more time, I could tell you stories and stories and stories of how people we would not think of and how this is being done by just ordinary people. And just one sick story for you that I had to share. So right now in our country, there's over 45,000 missing persons and children. I was reported by StatsCan in 2016. And knowing what I know now on the issue of human trafficking, myself personally, this isn't a fact, this is just my opinion, I am convinced that if they have not found the body yet, that human trafficking has scooped them up and they are probably in some form of exploitation. We have seen often times where there are missing persons in Canada and then they will end up being found in places like strip clubs or motels down in Minnesota and across our borders in the United States or just even here in Canada too as possible. So in other places it's happening. As you guys drive home today, just take a look along the 401, take a look along the QEW. There's the Motel 6, there's the Travel Lodge, there's a Holiday Inn. Could tell you so many stories of what Halton Police is doing just here along, along the highways with human trafficking and rescuing girls. But I share that stat with you because if it was your daughter, if it was your son, what would you do? And how far would you be willing to go? Because each girl and each boy is somebody's daughter and is somebody's son. Possibly somebody's sister, somebody's brother. And for me, we all have a part where we can do something, each of us. You don't need to do a TED Talk, so don't worry. You don't need to start an organization. You don't need to run a campaign. You don't have to do big things. Today is a great first step because you're becoming aware. If you walked in here not knowing what human trafficking is, you got to leave here today maybe unfortunately knowing, because now that you know, you should do something about it. But education is our greatest weapon. And knowing a little bit can actually change somebody's life. So become more educated on it. Go onto our website if you'd like, it's just freedom.ca, and you can do research on there of what to look for, how to identify situations of human trafficking. Ladies getting their nails done. In different salons, in Vietnamese salons, there's more of a tendency for that. If you go down to Chinatown, knowing small things of what to look for. And then if you see something, say something. It may be nothing, and hopefully it's nothing, but you might just in the end save a life. And for us, that is, that is what we do with, with our organization, with Freedom. Part of our mandate is to rescue and save that one. As I shared with you earlier, it's, there's over 27 million people in slavery. It's such a massive, overwhelming undertaking to think 
You hope that you can stop it. Will we ever stop it? Probably not in our lifetime. Will it always happen? Yes. But like Edmund Burke says, all that it takes for evil to triumph is for good men and women to do nothing. And so at least with us, with my team, we have taken a stand to say, as long as we have a voice, we'll be a voice for those who have been silenced. We will go down in history as people that actually stood up to do something. It doesn't have to be massive, but to do something. And even if we can't save them all, we can save one. And that's where you make the biggest difference. And in closing, I just want to share a story with you that is my favorite. And usually I cry at the end, so I'm really going to hope that I don't do this today. Um, it's one of my favorite stories about um, a man who's walking down on the beach. And this is, as you can see in the photo, and all of the starfish, thousands and thousands of starfish have been washed up on shore. And it's sunny out, and the sun's beating down. And of course, because these starfish are not in water, they're dying. And off in the distance, there's a, a young boy that's bending down one by one and throwing the starfish back in the water. And the man walking down the beach sees this, and he's puzzled. And he goes up to the boy, and he says, son, what are you doing? He said, you can't possibly save them all, and therefore, you can't possibly make a difference. What's the point? And smirking, the young boy looks up at the man, and he bends down, and he picks up one more starfish, and he says, it made a difference.